a big part of it is like you kind of have to start from where you are, right? So, yeah. And for Muslims today, it's almost ground zero. Like you, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like we, you know, no caliphate. There's no real, I, I would say, authentic Islamic governance anywhere in the world. So part of it today is that you just need to try to live ethically as an individual and as a community. I don't think that. Uh, questions of the state come into it for most people at this point but when you get down to it like i think that's something that people are trying to figure out like one thing that people should be learning through this process is that islamism as it exists like in the form of even stuff that's less extreme and like plainly barbaric and terrible than than like isis you know like muslim brotherhood and the Iranian state and stuff like that. I think that those need to be viewed as shortcuts or an attempt to take a shortcut that don't really get you where you want to be. They just bring you back into the modern configuration. You know, that's not what we're trying to do. It's okay as a stopgap. Like if it keeps the trains running on time, so to speak, then fine, right? But if you're trying to really craft a a society and a politics that's really animated by Islamic ethics, I don't think you'd want to do that. You don't just put the clerics in charge or you don't just write in the Quran as the constitution and say you have Sharia compliant finance and then run from there. Like that, that doesn't really fit the bill. Where the police are going to enforce Sharia laws, you know, it doesn't make any any sense. Yeah, like it's really important to the functioning of Sharia as it was originally understood and developed that those kinds of things didn't happen. Like that you have laws that are understood and that kind of inform the moral order of society, but it's not carried out in the same way that modern laws are like you wouldn't treat citizens as something that you need to manage in the same way and you you don't treat the legal institutions as instruments of the state they are supposed to represent god's authority on earth in a certain way and there's like a certain measure of legitimacy that's granted because things are arranged in the way that god has told us to arrange things or that god has allowed us to arrange things yeah. And I think, I mean, Halak makes this point like very strongly. I mean, it's really Sharia, like really isn't law, like in the sense, like you know, the right. term law doesn't really do justice. I think that the, the best thing that expresses this is the fact that like, in a, if you read like a thick book, most of what it's about is like how to like a boot yourself, like how to pray, you know, like things that you wouldn't really think of falling within the domain of law. They are like those technologies of the self. And I think that is like probably the strongest point i mean that has come out of like halak's work like in general is the focus on like the subject and like subjectivity and self-cultivation which is kind of i think in line with what you were saying about like trying to live ethically 